Hello and welcome back to RC Model Reviews. Today I'm going to look at the solution to a problem, or is it? Now, sometimes when we build very small models, we have no room for battery. You know, battery becomes the last consideration. And if you're dealing with very small indoor or even DLG models, sometimes a two cell battery is something you can't afford to use. It's just too big, too bulky, sometimes even too heavy. But as you know, most of our receivers and servos, even the little ones, are designed to run on 5 volts. And sure, they'll, they'll run on a lower voltage, such as a fully charged LiPo, which is 4.2, but that LiPo starts to get down to the 3, 3.3 mark, which still, still has some life left in it. Then there's always the risk that you'll suffer a brownout, especially if you've got a servo that starts drawing extra current. Things may start working until you start wiggling the sticks, and then it's goodbye city. So how do you get around that? How can you use a one-cell LiPo to get five volts in one of these small or very light models. Well, there is a device that claims to do that, and ta-da, there it is. It is a, a, a what's called a boost converter. So it takes an input of, in this case, I think 1.2 to 4.2 volts, which is a single cell LiPo or a, even a single well-charged nickel metal hydride, but I wouldn't try it, and turns it into five volts you can use to power your receiver and your servos. But it's very small, it's very light, why don't we see if it works? What you know? Will this really work? Will it do the job, or is it inviting just as much disaster as simply using a one-cell battery with servos and receivers that aren't certified to operate on one cell? Let's throw this thing on the test gear and see what happens. Now, for the purposes of the testing today, I'm going to be using some test gear. I'm going to use the Fluke multimeter, the Rigol oscilloscope, and my trusty old bench power supply, which I can vary the voltage quite easily, and also roughly measure the current, the, the amp meter on that is not very accurate. So first thing we'll do is we will connect up this boost regulator and see what range of input voltages it will operate on to deliver 4.2 volts on the output. Okay, so we're all set up to run the first test here. I've got the output of my lab supply at 4 volts. I've got the oscilloscope set to 1 volt, volt per division and I'm monitoring the output of the little boost regulator. And over here I've got my multimeter across the output as well. So we're going to measure the voltage here, we're going to see the voltage and any noise on the oscilloscope, and we're just going to see uh, the voltage you're putting in and get a rough indication of the current it's drawing, if anything. Now remember, there's no load on here at the moment. We don't have anything plugged in. So uh, these are not the results you'd normally expect, but it gives us a baseline to start from. So let's connect up the little boost regulator. And first of all, I'm just going to double check I've got everything around the right way because it's really sad if your magic smoke comes out when you're not ready. And uh, let's have a look. Here we go. Well, that's looking good. We have 5.07 volts. That's pretty accurate. I mean, normally 10% is good enough, but that's really quite close to 5 volts. It's drawing no less than 10 milliamps because this only goes down to 10 milliamps at the bottom level. And up here we've got the oscilloscope trace. What I'm going, it's going up and down a bit, but that's that's fairly normal because there's probably just a uh, a bit or two of error and the voltage here does seem to be going up and down a bit. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to plug something in. Let's plug in a receiver and a servo to give us an idea. So I'm going to use the receiver and servo I showed you earlier. I'll just plug this into, plug the servo in first so that uh, we have a load. And now I'll plug in the power and we should get a bit more current flowing because this receiver should power up. There we go. Yes, that's now going. And as you can see, immediately we're starting to draw current from the power supply. And we have some noise. See that? We've got some noise up here. This line's got thicker. What I'm going to do is I'm going to change to AC coupling, which means we're going to get rid of the DC component and just use AC. Let's go back there. So now we can wind up the game. We can look more closely. Look at amplify this a little bit. Let's get rid of the menu. Amplify this a bit and it'll give us an idea of how much noise. Ooh, look at all that noise. <laughs> um, so let's have a look here. We have currently got, I'll just set the position here, um, currently got how many volts? 100 millivolts per division. That's every little mark on this oscilloscope screen here. Every little horizontal line is 100 millivolts. So we've got about 200 millivolts peak to peak of noise on there. I'm going to wind up the frequency a bit so we can see the frequency that, that noise is on. You can see here, let's just set the trigger here so that we can make that a little steadier hopefully. Um, what am I triggering on? Uh, let's call up the trigger menu. Um, I've got hold off on there at the moment. Tr trigger on channel one. I think we're on channel one, yes. 
uh, for some reason it's not triggering. I'll have a look at that later anyway. Um, you can see there's quite a bit of noise, 200 millivolts of noise on there. That's probably not going to affect our receiver and our servos very much. They're not going to care too much at this stage. So that seems to be working fine. Now we've got, according to the 70 milliamps or something, um, what I'll have to do is measure how much is going into the receiver. But what tends to happen is when you increase the voltage uh, from a particular level to another level, to get the same amount of power, of course, um, you have to draw more current at a lower voltage. So power is voltage times current. So if we have 5 volts out at, say, 10 milliamps, and we have 2.5 volts in, we'd have to draw twice the current because we have half the voltage. But let's now take a look. If I wind down our bench power supply, next test, our LiPo is starting to go flat. So we'll wind this down. I expect to see the current figure go up a bit here. As I wind this down, this figure should remain unchanged. So let's wind it down 3.8 volts. 3.6 volts and as I said see the current's gone up to 70 or 80 milliamps now this remains unchanged that's very good it's regulating very nicely 3.4 volts 3.3 volts this is now going up to 0.9 because as I say as we bring the voltage down here we're having to put more current in to get the same amount of power because this receiver on the other side of our boost converter is going to be drawing the same amount of power now something interesting the noise level has actually dropped as we have reduced the voltage. Now let's go down to 3 volts, which I think is, is an acceptable minimum for a LiPo. If you get a LiPo down to 3 volts, then you're really asking for trouble. Look at the noises dropped even further. Voltage here virtually unchanged, so this is regulating really, really well in respect to the input voltage. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start moving the servo and see whether a change in load causes a difference in the output voltage. Okay, I've gone back to the DC coupling at the moment, so the line on the oscilloscope's jumped up to the 5 volt mark. And I'm going to start moving the servo. As you can see, there we go. Now you will notice that the, the, the voltage does sag a little, see? Um, at the moment, the output is reading 5.04 volts. If I move the servo a lot really consistently, it's down to 9.4 on average. But as you can see from the oscilloscope line, it's actually dipping quite a bit below 9.4. It's actually dropping about half a volt. We're losing about half a volt maximum peak. Notice also that when the servo is quiescent, we're only, well, not moving, we've got 140 milliamps. When I move the servo really hard, we're going up to three quarters of an amp sometimes, right? So I'll move the voltage up again and see what difference that makes. Let's go back up to four volts, our normally charged LiPo, say, or four point, yeah, four, four, four point zero volts. Um, I'll try it now. The voltage sag, it's about the same, a little bit less. So, uh, yeah, I have to say, this thing actually works. It actually works surprisingly well. It doesn't sag a lot when you've got uh, heavy current being drawn. It doesn't have too much noise. As some people will say, 200 millivolts, that's a heap of noise. But oh, I've got to remember that these receivers have their own built-in filtering and regulators. So they're going to chop most of that noise out. And uh, I'll just see if it's getting warm, put my hand on it. Ah, it's not even warm. Not even warm. So, you know, driving one servo, you know, even if you're driving it fairly heavily like this, the voltage regulation is nice and stable. The thing seems to work as advertised. So I'm going to give this a go in a DLG. In fact, the DLG that I'm building up, um, I might give it a go if I can fit it into the new DLG, which will be the subject of an upcoming video. Um, I'll use it in there and run with a one cell LiPo and just see how well it goes, because at the moment I'm fairly impressed. However, before I give it the big thumbs up, I think it's only fitting that we rip the heat shrink off and see what's inside and how well it's made because who knows it may just be hanging there by the grace of God and a bit of spit and dribble from the person that put it together. Let's find out. And here it is in all its naked glory, a total of nine components. Count them, nine components. I'm actually quite surprised. I thought there would be a dip, which is like a little IC with pins down each side, a dip package there for the boost, but it, it's got two three pin semiconductor devices and a bunch of passives and a rectifier diode, and that seems to be about it. And on the other side, we've got two electrolytic capacitors. The black ones there, they smooth out the flow of electricity. And an inductor, a 220 um, microhenry inductor, which basically acts as an auto transformer. It basically takes a smaller voltage and whacks it up to a high voltage. Um, I'm gobsmacked at how well that works, given the small component count. I, I'm really quite impressed. It must be a clever piece of design. Someone's actually done a good job with a minimum of components. It's no wonder they're so cheap. Um, yeah, brilliant, brilliant. Um, I'll be using this in the DLG. I'll see how long, how well and how long it works. And if there's any problems, I'll let you know. But in the meantime, I have to say, if you're looking to convert a one cell LiPo into five volts to power a relatively small system, you're not going to get oodles of amps out of this thing. But if you've got a couple of servos and a DLG, this thing looks like it's going to be just the bee's knees. Absolutely brilliant.